Hey everybody, this is Eric. And today I want to share with you a couple of different ways to use native tools to cut some holes in walls. Okay, so cutting holes in walls, that seems pretty basic and you've probably done it before. Um, but you know, there's a few things to think about. And also like everything in SketchUp, I love the fact that you can do it more than one way. So what I want to do is look at a couple of different ways to do it. And then of course, more importantly, why you might want to use the different approaches depending on your particular project needs. So let's just go ahead and get into it. I've got this here. I don't need this. I'm going to delete it. That was just for my intro video. Instead, I'm going to start from the very beginning. We're starting with a blank wall. And for this demo, again, depending on where you are with SketchUp, if you're brand new to SketchUp, I do want to point out the fact that this is a great place for you. This is going to be some really basic stuff, but it's very, very important uh, to get the fundamentals right first. So I've got a wall. It's also grouped. You'll notice if I double click into it, you can see I've got raw geometry. And if I double click out of it, it means I'm outside of the group. And for this particular example, I kind of want to look at what it means to work with a wall that's already been grouped. For example, that maybe you work in groups in 2D and then you extrude everything. And now we need to punch some holes for windows or for some openings. So with that said, I'm going to start by going into the group. So now I can actually edit the wall face geometry. So now it doesn't really matter what kind of opening we're doing. I'm going to start with just the rectangle tool, but you can see here if we wanted to use keyboard shortcuts and draw circles, or again, a keyboard shortcut and switch to the freehand tool and make an opening that is a little bit more say organic, you can do that. So again, whatever the tool is, we want to start by making sure that we have a closed face in order to be able to extrude or push or punch, depending on how you want to think about it, through the wall. That's what we're going to do. We're going to take this and we're going to punch it through the wall. So again, if you, if I back up a step just before I do that, if I undo sort of those last two and just leave that one there. So the reason why I'm inside of the group is just if you're new to SketchUp, a good refresher is if you draw a rectangle, for example, on the outside of the group, you can see that I have a face here and I have a group here. And if I kind of spin around, uh, you might see this little flashing that's going on. This is called Z fighting. It basically means two faces are sitting on top of each other. This group this protects the wall so that this window group, if I try punching or pushing through, you'll see in just a second, it can push through or it can push out. But what it's not doing is actually, it's not actually punching a hole in the wall. You can see that that group protects it. But in this case, I actually don't want that protection. So I'm going to have to make sure that I am inside of the group. So that's just why we're doing it this way. So as you just saw, I was trying to push this through using the push pull tool and I was not able to do that on the outside. So let's make sure I select my face, switch over here to push pull. And then what you want to do is you want to pull. You have to be careful because you can't see always behind your wall. So if I let go and think that I pushed through, you can see if I turn around the back end, I go, whoa, I did push through, but I pushed way too far through and it's, you don't want to go, you don't want to do it that way. So what I'm going to do is undo that. And what I need to do is when I push through, I need to make sure that I know where I'm stopping. So I need a kind of a, a stopping point. So depending on the angle that you're working, you may want it to rotate around so that you can come over here and find a back edge of the wall. So we're going to inference this back corner or this back edge, whatever is easier for you, and then let go and watch what happens. You'll notice it disappears. So I'll do that one more time. I'm just going to grab, I'm going to push through the wall. I'm going to snap it so that it goes along the back edge. You can see I'm getting that Z fighting. That's exactly what I want as the two touch each other and bam, it's gone. You can even look in the shadow just if you don't believe me. There you go. That hole is there now and that's great. Um, I do want to point out again, because I know that seemed very simplistic, but sometimes you're working on a much bigger wall or you're working on something really small like this, like you're punching an opening that maybe isn't a window and you're zoomed way in. And so getting, when you do that push pull, finding where that back edge might be a little bit more difficult if you're trying to align to the top of the wall. So sometimes you can get lucky and you can just push it. And if you get it right, it'll just disappear. That doesn't always work. So I do want to make sure that I'm pointing out another way to do it, which is for me, I have a keyboard shortcut, but I'm going to go ahead and show you where to find this edge style, 
back edges, so view edge style back edges. Back edges are kind of helpful. It's almost like x-ray mode, only you're, you're not able to actually go in through the walls and, and delete geometry and stuff. It's just a, a way that um, it's just for edges only. So I can see those dashed lines. Basically, it looks like I'm seeing through the wall. So when I go do, do my push pull, if I'm zoomed in really close like this, I can just toggle my keyboard shortcut for back edges. And there they are. And I do my push pull. And then instead of snapping up high, or hoping that I'm hoping that I'm hitting in the right spot, I can also snap to the bottom of the wall, which might be easier for me to find. And then I let go, and you can see there it is. There's my other hole, and that's great. So as far as getting rid of these openings, it's if you decide you change your mind and say that's not where it needs to be, I don't want that hole. If you just try deleting, if you just try going in and deleting. The line you can see by when you have, especially when you have your back edges turned on. Like in this case, if I don't have my back edges turned on, if I turn that keyboard shortcut, it might be really deceptive to kind of erase like this and then think that you think that you're good. But if you turn those back edges, if you're working with back edges, you can see actually that there's this geometry. It's a little hard to see, but um, so there they are. You want to make sure that you go through and you do a left select. So when we left select, we can just select everything and delete it. So let me go back and do that over again. Instead of deleting edges, I'm going to come over here, left select, delete, left select, delete. And you can see that hole in the wall, it just heals itself up nice and fresh and clean and back where we started. So the cool thing about that is that, you know, there's no stray lines in there. And with no stray lines, you can open up entity info, double check the group and you can see that we are solid. And a solid group is kind of cool because that gives me the opportunity to show you one more way to punch holes in walls using native tools. Now you'll notice in this last example, I had to go into the group in order to draw on my wall face. Now, what if I don't want to do that? Maybe it's nested. Uh, maybe I'm going to cut more than one opening. Like I want to do three windows instead of two, instead of having to repeat that push pull. This might be a kind of a cool example to dust off if you haven't used them in a while. Solid tools. So what I'm going to do is I want to pull those open. You'll see here there's a, some great tools. We won't cover all of them here in this video, but I want to point uh, out a couple of them. So what I want to do is just draw that same window opening. And in this case, what I want to do is push. I'm going to push that as if I'm going through the wall. But in this case, you'll notice that because of that, remember, we did that little thing in the beginning where we are protected. So we are protected by the group. Well, if I make this window opening also a group, then what I can do is I can see that both my window is solid and my wall is solid. And when I have that, I can come over here and I can select this one on the right here. It says subtract. So if I select the window first, and then click solid tools, subtract, and then click the wall, then there it goes, it disappears. And what's cool about that is it didn't matter whether it was in a group or not, as long as it was a solid, it let me subtract that. And then the nice thing about this too, if I undo that, is it doesn't really matter again, how many I'm doing. So if I wanted to do something like three walls, all I would have to do is make sure that everything inside of what I wanna remove, is raw geometry. So right, so I have raw geometry inside of a group. And if I wanna get really particular here, I could center that on that wall before I do this. And I'm gonna do that same thing. I'm gonna say, sub, I'm gonna select my windows and I'm gonna say subtract and I'm gonna go subtract from my wall. So that was three clicks. Select, 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 click, click, click. And compared to if you did it the other way with the push pull tool, you'd have to go one click, two clicks, three click, four click. And then if you wanted to copy this hole, you could go one, that's five click, six click, seven click, eight click, nine click. You see what I mean? So it's not to say that one method is necessarily better than the other, but depending on what you're trying to do, the number of windows you're trying to punch, whether it's grouped or not, solid tools could be the way to go. I'm going to wrap up here with one more kind of solid tool. I said I was going to look at two of them. So let me just undo the holes that I just punched here. I want to leave it back to where we were before I punched those. And I'll center those. You can see if I move those, 
there's no hole in the wall. It's just the window openings that I want to use as my as my solid cutter, so to speak. And the other one is, which could be a good option, depending on how you want to do this, is, and maybe this works better if I just have one instead of three, but if you want to, you can use this one, which is called split. So if I choose both the wall and the window and I choose split instead of subtract, what it does is, it looks like it didn't do anything, but you can see if I move my window, my window opening is now, it remains. It hasn't, it did not automatically delete. And that's actually kind of cool because what I could want to do is come in here and make this a component and then um, give it a unique name and then come over here and offset this. Let's see, maybe I want to push this back a little bit, copy this, depends on how much work time you want to do, give this a little transparent material, maybe give everything except that material, maybe something like a little bit of a darker color, and there you go. You've got now the, you don't have to redraw that shape that you use to cut your window opening. You've already got it there by using, um, instead of by, by using subtract and you have to go back and redraw that shape again uh, unless of course you have an off-the-shelf window component ready to go you maybe would want to use that but if you're going to make your windows you can use that split tool and then that will both punch the hole and it will keep the object that you use to cut the hole it'll keep it there in place and you can just convert that into your component now some of you might be thinking well there are extensions that can do what i'm doing here which is cutting through two sides of a wall and aaron just did a video recently called double cut which is an extension that does this but we're looking at native tools today so i wanted to show you those two native tool methods i'll be sure to add a link in the description below so if you're interested check that out i'm going to leave you there hopefully you found this refresher useful again whether you do it the push pull way and you do it sort of manually and you want that level of control or whether you want to maybe pre-think a couple of things, work on the outside of the group and then instantaneously cut those holes using solid tools. Or again, there's always extensions who do things more complex and more specific to your needs. But hopefully you learned something new. If you did, give us that thumbs up. If you didn't, leave a comment. Well, if you did or didn't, leave a comment below. Let us know what you think. We read these comments, we respond to them and we'll keep this conversation going there. So with that, I'll leave you. I'll say thanks as always and see you next time.